We're very excited tonight. For the last, oh, month? Two weeks. Two weeks. These ladies have been touring as part of the first, what we hope will be an annual Fierce Reads tour. Lizzie just cringed as I said that. Uh, <laughs> I would like to actually, as part of a shout, these five ladies have all written wonderful books, but who put this tour together and did all this hard work is Lizzie Mason. <laughs> so, credit where credit is due. All we do is host it. We get a lot of the credit for these things, but Lizzie did all the hard work. The women up here have all written five incredibly imaginative, inventive, fantastical books. They're each going to tell you a little bit about their books, introduce themselves to you, and then they are eager to take questions from the audience. So be thinking of your questions now because we have a few little prizes for the first few people who ask questions. Because that's always the topic. Everyone seems to be afraid to ask the first question. So we're going to we're going to bribe you because we find bribery works. <laughs> the other thing we want to say is these five ladies, even though they've been doing this for two weeks, have been on a strict regimen of hand exercises. <laughs> they their hands are not only capable, but ready and eager to sign stacks of books for you. <laughs> they were going to <laughs> You're going to do have an imagination. <laughs> but they are so eager to sign books for you, you would not believe. So please, do not be bashful. Do not think you're imposing by asking for them to sign a copy for everyone you know. They would be thrilled. <laughs> With that, I'm going to turn this over to the women and let them tell you about their books. we've done in the last 14 days. Peter is the first bookseller to come up with the idea of a prize for the first question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Emmy Laidhorn and this is my book, Monument 14. Monument 14 tells the story of 14 kids from Monument, Colorado, who get trapped in a superstore while civilization collapses outside the gates. Trapped in the store are six high school kids, two 13-year-olds, and then a bunch of little kids, like really little, like five, six, seven, eight-year-old kids. Together they have to face a killer hailstorm, an earthquake, a chemical weapons leak, intruders who threaten the safety of their group, and their grief, their terrible grief over what they've lost. While writing this book, I, on frequent occasions, would ask myself, Emmy, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what kind of a person would invent 14 really nice kid characters, adorable, with, you know, personality quirks and everything, and then just torture them for 250 pages? What kind of a person would come up with hailstones the size of, of, you know, bowling balls, and what kind of a person would come up with a chemical weapons leak that divides the population based on blood type, so that a certain portion of the population becomes bloodthirsty monsters, and then other people become paranoid freaks and they hide away, yet others just start to blister their skin, their, their insides, everything. They blister until they, they expire. And the last, blood type sign shows no, no symptoms at all. They're completely fine. They're being made sterile and unable to reproduce. But for the time being, they just get to like watch everybody else go crazy. As, as dark as the book is and as filled with action, um, it has a very brisk plot. My brother described the plot as sort of like being handcuffed and then thrown down a flight of stairs. <laughs> In the nicest way possible. <laughs> um, it's, got the, it's got just a breakneck plot, but, and it's filled with all of this, this tension and scary events. But I think that at the, at the core of the book, really, it's about how we find our courage when we're faced with scary events. For these kids, they get to, to figure out how to be leaders, how to take care of each other. And really, I think at its center, Monument 14 is about being the best human that you can be. 
And having sat in many, many bookstores over the past two weeks, I've sort of become, begun to think that that finding the light within us is the theme in all of the books. <laughs> so I hope that you will buy mine with 13, and I hope that you will find what I've said to be true. <laughs>
Uh, he used, actually used to drive around with a bucket of water in the back of his truck because he never knew when he would be struck by lightning, catch on fire, and he could put himself out. <laughs> so, wise man. <laughs> but people began to avoid him because they never knew when he would be struck by lightning. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I continue though? No. no okay, yes. I will. Uh, so people began to avoid this, this man because they never knew when he'd be struck by lightning. Uh, and you do not want to be standing next to someone when they're struck by lightning. Uh, so he became kind of an outcast, but he never left. You know, he stayed a park ranger for the rest of his life. And I started to wonder, you know, why? <laughs> Why don't you just get another job? <laughs> a nice, you know, cushy office job, like casual Friday, air conditioning, but no. So I thought, you know, maybe he likes it. Maybe lightning is like a drug for him, like it makes him feel alive. So that was when my idea for Mia Price, My Lightning Addict, was born. Um, Mia has a number of pretty terrible after effects from being struck by lightning, um, one of which is the Lichtenberg figures that cover her from, you know, neck to toes. And they look a bit like this, if you can see. It actually looks like red lightning, uh, red lightning on the skin, which, you know, it's a real lightning strike phenomenon. Um, most people who are struck by lightning and get these Lichtenberg figures, it, it fades within a few days, but for my character, the lightning scars just continue to grow until they cover her. Uh, if she's struck one more time, they will continue to grow and cover her face, which no teenage girl wants that. <laughs> so she moves with her family to Los Angeles, where it hardly ever rains and lightning only strikes a handful of times every year. Um, but she trades, she trades thunderstorms for earthquakes, uh, one that destroys the city. And in the aftermath, two doomsday cults rise to power, because one doomsday cult is not enough. <laughs> uh, and both of them see Mia as the key to their apocalyptic vision. So uh, that is the story of Struck. Um, it's a very... Very dark story, but there must be something wrong with me because unlike Emmy, I never asked myself what was wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs>